In this video, we are gonna talk about diuretics and the way they affect our body and help improve some common renal, cardiovascular and endocrine disorders by excreting extra salt and water through the kidneys. Generally, diuretic is a substance that promotes diuresis or urine flow. There are several classes of diuretics and all of them run diuresis in the body with their own different mechanisms. Most of them work by secreting salt into the urine, and the water will be excreted followed by them. Salt excreting diuretics are the most commonly used class and they are categorized fall under four main groups. Now let's take a look at any of them. The first class are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Acetazolamide is the prototype agent in this group. Their site of action is the first part of the nephron or proximal convoluted tubule. These drugs result in the inhibition of bicarbonate reabsorption in the tubular lumen. This leads to the retention of bicarbonate in the lumen and it alkalinizes the urine. In the lumen, water will be secreted from cells, followed by bicarbonate retention. Also, these diuretics cause potassium to be excreted and wasted significantly. Acetazolamide is mostly used in severe acute glaucoma, and it can also be used to prevent acute mountain sickness or high altitude sickness. Acetazolamide is used as diuretic only if edema is accompanied by significant acidosis or high potassium level in the body. The second class are loop diuretics. The word loop refers to the segment of the Henle where they run their effect. In another word, it is called loop of Henle. The prototype in this class is furosemide. Loop diuretics have a significant effect of reducing blood pressure in a short time. In the state of edema, they excrete extra body fluid rapidly. At the same time, they won't waste potassium like carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. The exact mechanism of the loop diuretics is inhibition of the sodium potassium chloride transporter. By inhibiting this transporter, sodium and potassium can no longer reabsorb to the cells and they will be excreted. The water will be excreted followed by two. As a result, our body loses salt and water. The important application of loop diuretics is in the treatment of severe edema in patients with ascites, heart failure, and pulmonary edema. They are also used to treat hypertension, usually when patients don't respond adequately to other medications. Third class is thiazide. Hydrochlorothiazide is the prototype in this class. The main action of thiazide is to inhibit sodium chloride transport in the early part of the distal convoluted tubule. When this happens, sodium and chloride can no longer enter the cells, and they will be excreted in the urine. The low level of sodium in the cell promotes sodium-calcium exchange at the basal lateral membrane. As a result, the reabsorption of calcium from urine is increased and can lead to hypercalcemia. The main effect of thiazide is in hypertension, because of their long duration and moderate intensity of action. They can also be used for long-term treatment of chronic edematous states, such as heart failure. The last class of sodium excreting diuretics is potassium sparing diuretic. Spironolactone and eplatinone, which are steroid derivative antagonists of aldosterone, are prototypes in this class. All medications in this class cause sodium to be excreted and inhibit the excretion of potassium and hydrogen ion. That is why they are called potassium sparing. One of the important indications of spironolactone is aldosteronism, or elevated level of the aldosterone in the body. Spironolactone can cause alterations in body hormonal balance and lead to some conditions including gynecomastia. Therefore, they should be used with more caution.